formation of extra embryonic mesoderm coelom and bilaminar disc so in this we discuss competency that is formation of extra embryonic mesoderm and coelom as well as bilaminar disc so in the picture you can see the bilaminar disc which is made up of uh, epiblast superiorly then hypoblast inferiorly then we have two cavities one cavity above epiblast that is amniotic cavity one cavity below the hypoblast that is primitive yolk sac so coming to formation of extra embryonic mesoderm the origin of the extra embryonic mesoderm is not clearly understood it is said it may arise from several sources that is caudal region of epiblast parietal hypoblast trophoblast or a new germinal population had to be established so in an advanced marula consisting of 16 to 64 cells it enters uterine cavity on day 4 to become blastocyst blastocyst has an inner cell mass embryoblast and outer cell mass trophoblast embryoblast forms embryo chiefly trophoblast contributes to extra embryonic tissue majorly on the day 6 trophoblast forms two types of cells that is cytotrophoblast inner layer and syncytiotrophoblast outer layer syncytiotrophoblast helps in endometrial attachment of the blastocyst on day 6 that is implantation in progress in a cell mass of the blastocyst forms a bilayered embryonic disc having two types of cells dorsal one is epiblast and the ventral one is hypoblast bilaminar disc amniotic cavity helps develops amniotic cavity develops on the dorsal side and epiblast layer lies at the floor of amniotic cavity you can see in the picture hypoblast cells layer is the roof of the blastocyst cavity now called as exocoelomic cavity amniotic cells separate from epiblast and form a thin membrane called amnion it encloses amniotic cavity epiblast cells are continuous peripherally with the amnion some cells migrate from hypoblast to surround the exocoelomic cavity and form exocoelomic membrane it lies it lines the internal surface of cytotrophoblast the exocoelomic membrane and the cavity soon become modified to form the primary umbilical vesicle or also called as primary yolk sac embryonic disc then lies between amniotic cavity and primary umbilical vesicle below the outer layer of cells from the umbilical vesicle form a layer of loosely arranged connective tissue 
the extra embryonic mesoderm. It is the primary yolk sac which forms the extra embryonic mesoderm. So in this picture we can see the parts of somite that is uh, paraxial mesoderm, then intermediate mesoderm and lateral plate mesoderm and which is again dividing into somatic and splanchnic mesoderm. So coming to formation of silome, in the picture you can see the formation of silome. Formation of silome. Silomic or body cavity develops in the body of animals. The silomic cavity is a closed space in the trunk. It is lined by two kinds of cell sheets. One underlying the body wall and the other surrounding the gut. The silomic cavity offers several advantages. The body can become large in size. Tube within a tube architecture frees the inner tube that is gut from the constraint of the outer body wall. So that an individual organism can obtain high locomotive activity which is independent of digestive activity. A large cavity allows for the development and expansion of new visceral structures like the heart, liver and gonads. Silomic cavity is derived from lateral plate mesoderm. Lateral plate is initially a homogeneous mesenchymal structure that is located lateral to somatic mesoderm. The specification of lateral plate mesoderm from paraxial mesoderm is known to be regulated by different concentrations of BMP4. Subsequently, lateral plate undergoes splitting into somatic mesoderm and splanchnic mesoderm. Thus, the subdivision of two types of lateral plate mesoderm is made by binary decision. After splitting into two layers, one is localized underneath the ectoderm and the other is attached to the endoderm. At latter stages, as an embryo is folded into a three-dimensional structure, the lateralmost portions of left and right lateral plate eventually meet at the ventral midline. Thank you.